I think what I hear you saying is, how do you get a church really outwardly focused to what God is doing in His redemptive mission in the world when they seem to be so consumed with themselves? Is that close? That's close. Okay. Well, I, I would just say in responding to that, I've heard money and sex are the big gods, but I think both of those could be umbrellaed under consumerism. And I just think consumerism has even infiltrated the church. Sure. And we've got you know, Bible studies that feed us every hour on the hour. I'm convinced if one more bound Bible study, you know, was going to save the world, we'd all be saved. And, and somehow we've got to, to link our discipleship model. You hit right on it earlier, Ryan, <coughs> with what it really means to follow Jesus. Mm -hmm. I think we can do this with the vision. I think one of the things Ryan's done really, really well is, is, is put discipleship and the vision totally together. If you are a follower of Jesus, this is God's vision for your life. Without stealing too much thunder lately, later, can you just tell them real quickly like how you guys define a disciple? <laughs> Without stealing the oh, thunder? Yeah. No, I can't. But, uh, <laughs> Save that. Yeah. And I think I may have insight into the question you're asking. I think what you may be asking is um there may be elements of kind of a prosperity gospel that, that Jesus is really to help me get mine and my vacation and my comfort versus uh, what does it look like to be on mission, to, to reach the lost and really be about glorifying Christ versus how do I get mine now? Is that, is that close? Okay, so, so I think there is an element of... A part of being in the United States, particularly in the middle class, is everything is geared towards you. Uh, you are the number one consumer. Um, politicians want the middle class. Everybody wants the middle class. So when the middle class comes to a worship service, they want it to be about them. My music, my blessing, my, my, my. Matter of fact, they get in my chair where it's give me mine. And so we got to move pe people by the gospel of grace from how do I get mine to who is Christ and how do I lose my life so I can really find the true life I've been created for and I think that's <clears throat> prayer I think that's fasting I think that is running some people off in the name of yeah. Jesus amen um, that's, that's, that's what we're experiencing now mm -hmm. and, and, and a lot more focus on what is But yeah. Derwin, you're, the language you just used, you're talking like that to your people from the stage on Sunday, correct me? Yeah. I mean, you're, yeah. you're telling them straight up. <laughs> if this is not the way you define a, he a disciple, children that way. <laughs> then this is not the church for you. I mean, will you talk like that yes. to your people? Yeah, be, 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 because at Transformation Church, we have never sought out to be one of the fastest growing churches in the United States. Now, God, for some reason, has blessed us. We've sought out to be faithful. Yeah. And as a former NFL player, um, if everybody's not aligned to the vision and wanting to get into the game, now there's process for people to come to faith and to grow, but if you want a place to sit on the bench, there's 800 other churches in the Charlotte, North Carolina area where we will help you go. There are people going to hell. There are people in need of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it'll be eight people in there before we ever give up the vision to be upward, inward, and outward, joining Christ in reaching this world and transforming this world and bringing about racial reconciliation and unity mm -hmm. because we believe that the blood of Christ is that powerful. All right, well then speak, speak to the real tension then because what he's talking about is he's got some family friends in this deal. Pentagon leave the church. That's painful. You've had to make that choice, have you not? Yeah. No, no it is painful, and uh, you just can't 
change what Luke 9.23 says. If anyone comes after me, let him take up his cross daily and follow me. And so e even at the potential loss of some people from the church, all you're going to be doing is pruning those branches that are taking some life away from other branches that could produce fruit if you just uh, stuck to the, th this vision. And, and again, it flows from the word of God that, that this vision is one that we're going to lay down our lives for the sake of the gospel. And, and that is everything against this consumeristic culture that we live in, this, this self-denial, this, this dying to our own pleasures and treasures in order to prioritize the eternal kingdom of God. Um, and so, unless you're lifting high the cross in your church, and, and really the message of the cross, uh, uh, Colossians 1, uh, 20, that, just that reconciliation of the, the peace that comes through the, through the cross and the process of that, you, you, you may get people, but you're not going to get servants. 